Good evening, welcome to Options Center. Hey guys, sorry for the late video, but I, I did want to update you and just to show you that nothing really has changed. Um, we're still looking for higher prices despite the weakness. I do think the, the queues are very weak, but uh, I, I still think SPY is going to reach uh, its next level, about 580. I think the queues are going to eke out a new high. Um, and, uh, we'll see, we'll see what the rest does. Uh, SMH looks pretty bullish and I definitely want to show you that. I do think it's forming a, a bear flag or pennant. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through, uh, around the horn on the daily time frame and keep this a pretty short video and get the point across of, of why nothing's changed. So if you're new here, uh, first of all, go down to that bottom right hand corner, hit that options center logo and subscribe. Um, don't forget to uh, like the video. And so if you want to look at uh, the top down point of view, look at the weekend video, give a good uh, look at that. Otherwise, we're, we're just doing the dailies today. So we have SPY. We have this bearish rising wedge, had a throw over, broke down, back tested, and ripped to the downside. All right. After ripping back up, we had a, a V-shape there. We formed a ascending triangle you see this consolidation here for that top we're doing very similar things there well you say oh well then we should be going down from there i don't think so we're in a we're in a bullish stance here and uh nothing nothing has changed even though we've been sideways for 13 days now so um our target is still the 580 do we get it this week do we get it next week you know that's that's to find out right now we're we're just uh um correcting in time okay so going in a little bit closer i can just duplicate this consolidation area and it's the same thing we're in this we're in this box okay so you know most people would say okay well if we break out of this box to the upside it should rip to the upside that's true and what I think is going to happen with all the monthly, weekly, there would be a new daily divergence after breaking these highs, that this will reach our target and, and break down. And that would be a fake break, you guys. And, and the energy, all the energy that's pent up here would head to the downside. So when we do hit our targets, I do think, um, you know, until, you know, it, it's got to be proven but uh, I do suspect that uh, we'll we'll have a nice sharp move to the downside. So we're still holding the 20 moving average, and I think that could guide us to the upside now. We'll get back above the 8 and see what happens next. It, we have some catalysts coming up on Wednesday, FOMC minutes, Thursday, Friday, CPI, PPI, all those good things. So here is, uh, we're in this, big zone here okay so this is why i think that it's sometime this week or let's see what this line this is the ninth yeah sometime this week this huge cluster here it leads me to think that um our our top is going to be within this time frame okay so maybe some sort of um rip your face off rally and we we still have about 10 points on spy which is not it could be done in one day or uh, 100 points on ES or SPX and rip to the upside from some catalyst. Maybe, maybe it's FOMC. I don't know. So we'll see. Um, after that big move, I suppose we'll get our big drop at that point. And why do I say from that 580 area? It's because of the, on the, on the weekly time frame and go back and look at the, the weekend video, we've already hit our final targets. But on the lower time frame, we had this correction here. And this is the um, retracement, the 127% retracement. It's a big retracement from this correction. And then next above there, if price does continue to go higher, is the main one is 162 with uh, minor ones in between. The 162, which is the uh, 600, 599 to be exact, 599 area. So that's still a possibility. I won't rule that out. So we need to have call protection when we do get to this 580. All right. And, you know, just to, just to beat a dead horse here, 
Remember, this is the former all-time high, and we have the 100%. That's the all-time high, okay? We've tested it once. We've tested it twice, three times. And are we going to test back there? I don't know, but we're still above it. We're consolidating above it. That's bullish. Until we break down from it and hold down from it, maybe a back test and go lower, that would be a different story. But we're holding above. We're consolidating above. I think we're going higher. Okay, let's go to the Qs. Qs, again, the bearish rising wedge. Had that throw over and broke down viciously back through it. And now formed an equilibrium, broke out from it, and now holding above this, this old trend line. It's a good trend line there, uh, holding right above it. So that's a good spot there. The 20 moving average, that's our trend indicator, is uh, still holding positive. And what we're looking for, we, are, we hit the targets, and that, that could very well be it. But I think we left unfinished business with this close, with this open gap here. So I, I do believe we'll test... Um, the 495 area, which is the top of the range of our um, resistance. And that would look something like this. So I, we had it mapped out here, and we didn't quite get it. We just missed some unfinished business there. So could it be done with the C there? Yes. Do I think so? No. And I think that we move higher up to here and, and, and spike through to close the gap. So I think this is an A. B, and we have our C up here, which would be the end of wave two to come. All right, and that's a hundred. That's a hundred percent as well. A to C. Okay, SMH. SMH is interesting. How we had, how we've had it drawn. You could say that's a, a bear pennant, and it could have broke down from that point. It didn't. So it's kind of holding up strong here. The eight EMA. 100 we're above all the moving averages so different way we could look at it is more like this those tops there and we have our bear flag and so that could lead us to that 261 area maybe up to the you know if we throw over here up to the gap area and it should look something like this so i i wasn't sure if if we break down from here and this is a one two setup and we continue lower that's still a possibility but i'll show you why that might not be okay and I'll, we'll look at nvidia next all right so we still could make it up to this 265 that's the bottom of the gap that would be the top of that flag there so although i didn't think it would go there it's still a possibility especially if nvidia is leading the way we had a great move on smci uh, as well already so we're looking for this to be an a b and the c could be completed but my <laughs> spidey senses is that uh if we get over this 251 and hold over that we're going to 265. nvidia this has given us a little bit of a clue because we again had this kind of range here an equilibrium and we're breaking and holding above it so far so maybe if we see some more strength to head up it doesn't necessarily have to hit all-time highs this could be a leading diagonal one two three four and five but we have the opportunity for it to be um maybe get up to these levels here breakdown candle we'll see we'll see how far this can drag if this is a three-wave move I don't have it labeled here. Then this could be an ABC, or this literally could be some sort of ending diagonal, which it lo looks kind of funky there. So if this is a three-way move and we get one more move to the upside and get new highs, then that could drag SMH with it. Well, um, and at this on the same note, you know the cues are going to be screaming and kicking because we have. Um, you know, plays like Apple, we have a lot of the big tech that are breaking down. So this ascending triangle possibility, we're breaking down from it. We have these lows, and we're breaking that trend. So this could be very bearish. It could start dragging the cues. And maybe, now let's go to IWM, 
And again, maybe IWM starts to step up. So far, it has not. We're barely holding on. Barely holding on. But nevertheless, this is still, until proven otherwise, this is still a bull flag. All right. So I don't know if they'll make new highs, but this could show some relative strength coming up here soon. And or while the Qs start declining, even after the Qs hit it, hit their target that we're talking about, 465, I believe uh, we said it was, then the small caps could rip to the upside while the Qs are holding the rest of the market down. So that dichotomy could kind of happen later on, even after we hit those uh, targets. So I'm still kind of holding strong to the idea that this could end up with some relative strength. And I, I think that would come uh, a little bit sooner if if the rates, I wasn't meaning to do this, but if the rates start to fall, if this is just a bounce and the rates start to fall, then I, I think that could be bullish, at least temporarily for the small caps. VIX. So we have the VIX here. Now, again, this is starting to break out. This is like a triangle here. So you have this consolidation is starting to break out. You say that's bad, yes. But as of today, we put, first of all, we have a 17% move, which is telling us that the market's gonna be bullish here coming up tomorrow, the next day. But I think more likely tomorrow, because if you look at this, we're at resistance right now. We close that resistance. We have support, resistance, resistance, we're there so it could even spike up there or it could uh, break down you even gap down tomorrow okay so our move can start as soon as tomorrow to the upside for the market and get a rejection by the VIX uh, from this resistance so we'll keep an eye on 23 if the VIX goes over 23 and holds over 23 that's that's another breakout so then the, the market should be heading to the downside. So those are some things to look at. Um, I hope this helps. Uh, I have, you know, some questions, a lot of questions coming in uh, from members. And I, I want you to let you know that I'm, um, first of all, the cues are going to be number one, but I'm scaling into puts as the cues go up. Well, what if the cues don't go up? Then we'll have to adjust accordingly. But I, I, I think they will. I think this is coming to a conclusion. Let me show you SPY and just on the 65, just so we can, the market wants to confuse everybody. So it's still, it's here's this bearish rising wedge within a wedge. And now we have, this to me is the first part of the move where we have one, two, three, and maybe four is in here. And then maybe this is, uh, the beginning a wave one two right here and this is an a now we have another ending diagonal so this looks very confused it's a three wave move so this could be a one now we're, we get a deep two and really the traditional sense we're just flagging we have a triangle and i think we go break out we're at the bottom i don't think we'll go any lower break out to the upside because we're at support, just like the VIX is at resistance, and you'll see what happens from there. So in my mind, wave four is done, and it looks like I have wave four marked right here, and that's okay too, you can mark it back here or here, and it looks like this is an ABC for a one. Wave two, we're still holding at that 23, right here, very important, and then we'll get a, a short three, four and five going up here it's happening you guys it's um it, this this is a major top oh i promised i promised somebody i said in the next video that i'll show you this so this will be quick here is the major count for the monthly time frame oh, monthly max here here is the major count i'm looking at and i'll explain it to you very quickly the Elliott Wave, this is 1929, 1930, crash. Look at this being a one, two. There is information that I do not have from the 1800s. I don't know how that's gonna play out. I have 2000, 2008 playing as a flat pattern for wave three, four major. Now here is 
what I think is happening. This is wave five. This can complete this entire thing. But I think it's more likely that after this wave four, this wave five is actually going to be a continuation as a wave one. So now we have to have a sharp wave two. We'll go back 62% or so. This isn't going to be perfect. We pull back to, let's say, this um, previous wave four, 2600. That's a possibility. And this is a one, two, and then we move beyond for another wave three as an extension. Okay. And then so at the end of this extension, wave four, five, then we have the major, major, major top. Again, super cycle. I hope that helps. Have a wonderful night. We'll talk to you tomorrow.